What's up everybody? All right, so today I'm gonna to walk you through setting up a simple trading station. Now the reason I'm making this video is because every single week I get emailed the same question. A beginner trader will say, Ross, I wanna get into trading and I think I'm gonna need a new computer. What type of computer should I get? Or Ross, I wanna set up external monitors like the ones that I have back there, but I don't know what monitors to buy, what cables I'll need. Or I bought the monitors, I bought the cables, I plugged them in and all they have is a black screen. So I'm going to walk you through setting up a simple trading station. Now this video has a lot of overlap with my traveling trading station video because my traveling trading station is a very simple setup. So you'll notice a little bit of overlap there, but of course a big differentiator is that for a traveling station, you need a laptop. Whereas for just a simple station, you can use a desktop computer if you want. All right, so let's get into this video and start breaking down a simple trading station. So the first item on your equipment list is the computer. So when it comes to picking out a computer for trading, what I always recommend is that you pick out a computer that's branded as a gaming computer. And that's because a gaming computer is almost always going to be much faster than just regular off the shelf computers. So what we look for specifically is a solid state hard drive. A solid state hard drive is a little bit of a newer type of hard drive and it runs a lot faster without overheating than the traditional disc spinning hard drives. Now you wanna be careful that you don't get a hybrid. Some computers have the old disc and a new solid state hard drive, kind of side by side. You don't wanna do that. Just get a new one that has a dedicated, usually 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive. Now the second thing a gaming computer will have is a lot of RAM and that's your memory. So a typical laptop that you just buy, you know, whatever, a lower end model, might have eight gigabytes. We wanna have 16 gigabytes, if possible, 32 gigabytes. If you have a desktop computer and you can go higher, that's great, but 16 to 32 is usually just fine. Now, I like to use a laptop, and that's partly because of the way I work. I'm someone who works 12 to 14 hours a day, and so I start the morning in bed. I open my laptop and I check the scanners, I check the news. And then I make my way back down to my office. Around lunchtime, I work in the kitchen for a little bit. In the afternoon, I often either go back to my office or I work on the couch. In the evenings, I usually work on the couch and then I finish up the night working in bed. So a laptop for me is really conducive to that work style, but I know some traders who like to have a trading desktop that they leave obviously in one room and when they're done trading, they close the door of that room and they don't go back to that computer for the rest of the day because they don't want the temptation of getting back into a trade, let's say in the afternoon or after hours or something like that. So there may be a sort of practical application for having a desktop, but for me, having a laptop has always been more convenient. And then of course, what's really nice is that because it's a laptop, it's portable, I now have the basis for a traveling setup. And my traveling setup right now is basically the same as a simple setup. It's my laptop plus two external USB monitors. So when it comes to the external USB monitors, I really like these ones. Uh, these are made by ASUS. Again, not a um, product endorsement here. Not getting paid to say that. These are just the ones that I happen to like. I like them because number one, they're super skinny, so they fit in my carry-on bag. Number two, they weigh almost nothing. And number three, they're 1080. And number four, all I need to plug them in to make them work is the USB cord. I don't need to plug it into an additional power source. I don't need to get a special video adapter or video card. And I could plug in four of these into one computer. Now, the only thing stopping me from plugging in four of them for a, from a practical standpoint is the fact that my USB, my computer only has two USB ports. So if I wanted to plug in four of these, I would have to get a USB hub which is basically like an extension cord for USB. You plug one into the USB of your computer and it'll give you, it'll turn one port into like four ports or into six ports. And then you can plug all the additional monitors into there. 
So anyways, with these USB monitors, I got them on Amazon for around $150 each. The 1080 is a little more expensive than the 720 resolution, but I really recommend the 1080 because it just it seems like the right size, uh, the right resolution for this size monitor. And it's about a 15 inch monitor, which uh, really is, or maybe it's, it's 13 inch, but it's really just about the same size as my laptop. Um, I think it's 15 inch and it, it's really just for me uh, a perfect fit. Now, once you have this set up, the actual monitor comes with its own little case that also serves as the monitor stand. So you don't have to lean it up against books or whatever, although you could if you wanted to. So all you have to do to power these is plug them into your USB drives or USB ports. And when you plug it in, your computer will automatically try to download a driver for the monitor. I've had a problem a couple of times where I plug these in and they're just blank. Nothing is happening at all. So I want to walk you through what to do if that happens to you because I think it's a fairly common problem. So the first thing to do is uh, down in your search um, uh, bar, you can type in display settings. And then you'll see the option to change display settings and you click on that option. Now, as you can see here for me, it's showing these two external monitors and of course the main monitor of my laptop. And you know what, that's the fourth or fifth reason I like using um, a laptop because the laptop comes with a monitor. So I already have one and now I just add two more which gives me three monitors total, which is cheaper than having to buy three external monitors, which is what I would need to do if I was using a desktop. So anyways, um, with the display settings, you can click the detect button, and if it says didn't detect another display, even though you have one plugged in and it's simply not recognizing it, it means that there's obviously a little bit of a problem. So the next step is to type in device um, manager, and you open this up, and this is kind of cool because what you can do is you can see basically if the driver is working for these USB monitors. So what you can do is you can click on display adapters right here and this drops down and it shows me that I have these two installed. Now the last time I was having a problem with this, um, one of the monitors was working and the other was not working. It was showing up um, somewhere down here, I can't remember if it was um, where it was, but it was showing up in one of these um, tabs down here, it was other devices or something like that. And I had to tell it to, I had to right click and tell it to um, disable the driver or disable the device. And then once I disabled it from there and uh, I unplugged it, plugged it back in, it reappeared in the right place up here. So a little bit of a quirk. I'm not exactly sure why that happened. Uh, you can also, if you do run into this issue where neither of them are working, you can try to manually download the driver. And the way you do that is you just look on the back of the monitor and it says the model number. So this is MB169B+. So I Google MB169B+, drivers, and boom, it pulls up the ASUS website. Uh, where I can download the drivers, install them, restart the computer, and that usually gets things up and running. So getting these set up is, is usually fairly easy. You shouldn't have to go through all this. It should just be as simple as you plug it in, it recognizes it, and then you just choose where to place it. Now one of the things you will need to remember to do is for multiple displays, choose to extend desktop to this display. If you choose to duplicate the desktop, then all you're doing is mirroring your current desktop on a second monitor. That's kind of like if you went into, you know, any Radio Shack or Circuit City, you'd see how every TV was playing the same station. That's mirroring, and that's obviously not going to help us for our trading. So we instead want to extend the desktop to these displays. Now, you could change the orientation to portrait. I know some people have, I've seen some trading stations where people have their trading station set up like this and you know that's cool if that works for you but that doesn't work for me so I don't do that I just have it set up as landscape recommendation is 1080 that's what it should show for you uh, this shows 150 percent I, I don't know maybe I could change it to 100 
I'm not exactly sure what that does, but it says recommended is 150, so I'll just leave it at that for right now. All right, and then if you wanted to change the placement of these, you had to switch them from that side to that side, you could do that, and then just click apply and it would be done. And that's really as simple as it is. I mean, like I said, you might have an issue with the drivers, but um, if you've never installed, I think the issue that I had was that I had an older version of these uh, USB monitors before I installed the new one and I didn't delete the old driver so it kind of caused some issues until I cleaned things up. So if you've never used one before you should be able to just plug it in and uh, you know be be running. Now that you have your computer and you've got your monitors and remember the only cables we needed came with the monitors so we didn't need to buy any special cables so if you're going to use this setup for traveling all you need really is each monitor, each case, each USB cable that it comes with, your laptop, and the power cord. And that's it. So you're really in good shape there. Now, I personally use Wi-Fi a lot when I'm trading. And I know some people say you should always be hardwired. You should always be hardwired. You know, I try to be hardwired as much as I can when I'm at home. But sometimes, because I come down from the bedroom with my laptop, I forget to plug in the Ethernet cord. And so I just end up trading on Wi-Fi, and it's not a problem. When I'm at hotels, I trade on Wi-Fi and it's not a problem. What's always good to know is that you can turn your phone into a mobile hotspot. So in order to do that, I'll just show you guys real quick. Um, you, go into, um, you go into your settings tab. I don't know if this will zoom in. But you go into your settings tab and then you scroll down to personal hotspot. So you click on that and then you just check on, you select a password, and then your computer's Wi-Fi signal will find this network that you just created and you can connect to the internet using your phone. I like to have that as a backup, always knowing I can do that if I'm trading on hotel Wi-Fi, I'm trading in a cafe, you know, anything like that. I know that I always have this as a backup as long as I have decent cell service. All right, so make sure you remember that because that is a really helpful thing to have. Now, when it comes to setting up your layout, what I like to do is I like to have my broker screen dead center. And that's because, you know, I've got my hands on my hotkeys, and so I want to be able to look straight ahead when I'm trading. So I've got my broker right here on the main screen, and I put the charts on the left side and the right side. Some people like to have their charts on the same monitor, but, and you could do that for one, you know, because you could probably have room to fit one right on the side. But for me, I just have this main screen as my level two windows and my open position windows. And even if I was trading like, you know, on, on Coinbase or something like that, I would be on GDAX, I would, for cryptocurrencies, I would have the level twos right in the middle. I would have uh, the charts over on the side. Like this is just the way I like to trade. Doesn't matter what you're trading. So I'll put this chart over on this side, over here. I've got um, this chart over on that side. So I've got my charts. And basically what I do is I set it up so each monitor will show me two stocks. So if I bring this one back over here, you guys can uh, just see again. So that monitor is showing two stocks. We've got this one on the left and this one on the right showing the one minute time frame, five minute time frame, and the daily. And that for me gives me a good picture. So that means with my traveling setup, I can really only watch like three or maybe four stocks at once. I can't watch, you know, six or seven, but that's okay because each morning I usually narrow it down to like two stocks that I really like. So it's not a problem. Now, the last thing I need to make room for are my stock scanners. And you can see a couple in the background here. So I can lay those on this main screen. I can even close out a couple windows I'm not using. Or I could tuck them over on the side of this screen and just make the charts a little bit tighter, which is fine. When you have a simple trading station, you, you know, kind of make the best of the space. But you know what's interesting is that at a certain point, you know, I've got six external monitors turned up, turned on, well, they're off right now, but, you know, set up right here. And, you know, 
it, can I really watch every single chart that's on there at once? And the answer is probably no. And what if I set up another six right here? And so I have 12 monitors. At a certain point, you, you reach diminishing returns. And it just doesn't make sense to keep adding more and more and more monitors. So I'm definitely a big fan of keeping it simple. When it comes to my, my traveling setup, it's very simple. Um, I actually do bring uh, a second computer with me. And I bring that with me because I need to stream to the chat room. You know, so this whole setup that I have here is, it's obviously pretty elaborate, but a lot of that is because of what I'm doing in the chat room, being able to broadcast my audio, broadcast my screen share. And if you're not doing all of those things, you don't need all of this equipment. So definitely a big fan of keeping it simple. And, you know, I also kind of like symmetry. So, you know, I sort of like to have whatever I am using to be the same models, you know, this, just sort of the same layout. It just kind of works for me. So, uh, you know, different people are different with that kind of thing. And I know when I was started trading, it was a mish mishmash of, you know, different monitors of different sizes and some were matte screen and some were gloss. And it's because I was on a budget, you know, I would buy whatever was on sale and that's fine. You know, I have, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But for me, the way I have it now, I like to sort of have things uh, uniform and it helps me feel like I'm a little bit more organized. All right, so I hope this has been a good walkthrough of setting up your basic, very simple trading station. In some upcoming videos, we're gonna talk about setting up more of a uh, intermediate trading station. And I'm gonna do a walkthrough of everything that I'm using for you guys, because I know some of you will find it interesting. And some of you may decide to use similar uh, equipment, which is totally cool. So if you guys have any questions at all, post them below. I'll come back through. I'll answer any of those questions. I want to help you guys get up and running with your trading station. So let me know if you have questions and we'll get them answered. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content. Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.